apparently. Um, that's changed for everyone else on Sunday, but we still need to, to sort that out within the, the chamber, which I'm sure we'll do shortly after this meeting. Uh, can I welcome you all to today's uh, major travel committee? Um, can I ask for any apologies for absence that we received? anyone else that uh, we weren't expecting, I suppose that'd be the other way around, wouldn't it? Yeah. Be. I couldn't see uh, someone that's been for life mentioning it. Okay, moving on then. Uh, second item is declaration of interest, and that's just the usual reminder from yourself to all of yourselves and myself as well, that if anything crops up at any time now or during the meeting, please uh, make sure you notify us accordingly so we can fill out the relevant paperwork. Uh, the third item is the minutes of the last meeting, and if I can move uh, the minutes of the last meeting that was held on the, um, the 3rd of November, because that's today, um, and the meeting that was held on the 6th of October, uh, be approved as a correct record, uh, subject to noting the responses to questions asked by Councillor Nicholas, um, which are appended to the Chair's note rather than be read and uh, accordingly. Does that answer those questions accordingly? on the front of the chair's notes.
And then if you look at transport to the north, over that organisation with the provision of transport within the north. So Rail North is closely aligned because uh, they run, are responsible for northern and transparent uh, uh, franchises. So HS2 has another part involved in, within the context of rail, responsible for the development of a high speed 2 network. We have other operators operating on the city line in terms of Virgin Trains. Midlands trains and even North West. What this is just really explaining is, is the parties that sit behind the context of any of the rail schemes that come through in terms of our own aspirations uh, for some of the interventions we've got set out in our long term strategy. That's it. Uh, 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 just a brief summary, if you like, when we set out that long term strategy was looking uh, 20 years ahead where we were setting out interventions. If I look at CP5 and CP5, period is 2014 to 19. We're making reasonable progress. We've got three growth deals, schemes underway in Gold North, Newton Willows and Holton Kerr. We've got the issue on the Mercer Air Rolling Stock replacement, which is in consideration of development as we're moving through this year. We've got a short term rail strategy. We've worked with Mercer Electrics in terms of introducing interventions as part of an investment over a five year period. But obviously, that's focus for this year. So if you look at that, there's, there's reasonable progress. They have challenges. Future years, well, we've got a review of the long-term rail strategy, and that will be completed by spring of next year. And it's worth recalling, when we approved that, I was approved by the combined authority in April 14. Transport for the North wasn't there. New arrangements for the franchise weren't there. <coughs> and HS2 and its implications wasn't, was just emerging. Northern Powerhouse was an that came after. So quite significant reviews as part of our own approach to that. And I would say when we did the long-term strategy, we had to reduce, if I recall, about 29 industry documents to try and formulate a long-term strategy in the first instance before the combined authority. And that was a significant challenge. So when we go back to review, we'll perhaps get the chance to look at these changes and to have a little bit more evidence look at some of the interventions in future years. As you can imagine, a lot of the focus was on the first five years, so it was more evidence based going in for the first five years than the following years in that, in that long term rail strategy. So, when we look at the future schemes, we've done a prioritisation across the city region. Ten of the top 15 schemes identified within the city region are rail based projects. So they've got a rail development that's quite complex. If you think of HS2, you're looking at the outputs from that, the initial outputs by 2026. So it gives the, the issue with rail is that, that, that long leading time for all the steps that you work through on that. And even if we look at a slightly more simple one, which is Newton Willis design, the design work obviously starts in 2014, will actually complete it by March 18. And of course, there's quite a few steps before you do design work, which we'll touch on a little bit later in the presentation. But it gives you an idea of timeline involved with these interventions. Liverpool Central Station was upgraded four years ago. But in, in, in effect, uh, the, the work on that was an intricate piece of work to get to a, a facility that, in effect, was at or near capacity. It needs a longer term solution. It will be a significant issue. The network rail has identified projects as key areas of development for CP6. There are aspects of work in CP5 that is recognised won't be delivered, and so there's a spillover into CP6 from CP5, <coughs> along with whatever work comes through on the considerations of what would form the CP6 work. And this slide perhaps gives it a clear picture. When you think about how rail schemes are developed, it's through what they call a, a grid process, which is a, a rail investment program. And in effect, there are eight steps there. So when they talk about grid stage one and two, it's to initiate a scheme. When they talk about grid stage three and four, it's actually to choose an option. When they work through on grid stage five, it's to design. And when you look at grid stages six, it's actually to build. And then there's a close out for it. When you hear a lot of the reports, you say, well, what are the grip stages? If you look below that, and I would say, uh, the first
first opportunity to put an outline business case. To do that, you've got to be at the end of group stage four, which is a single scheme development. So what that's indicating is that there's a lot of some costs to actually develop the scheme to get to a stage at which you can put an outline business case. And of course, you don't secure external funding until you get to the full business case. And that's when we say to you, so what that's, what that's indicating is that there is a considerable amount of work to get to a proposition we can start to consider our own business case. The other areas I've shown on there is that the um, full business case would come in at the end of uh, group stage um, six, there, where you're actually ready, to, sorry, group stage five, when you've actually completed the design and finalised the costs. So I think it's just useful just to, to leave that up there because those are the steps they are the steps built into Network Bill for all the schemes in any third parties that sit across that. And I think the, the key issue there is, is the extent of work to get to a stage of trying to put together an outcome business case. What this shows here typically is just to think about a scheme, a large scheme. But we have some significant schemes in our long term real ambitions. So a £500 million scheme, very significant scheme, but they are in. So when you look at that, the timeline for that, you, know, you look at to put a outline case, a group stage one and two, you're talking anything between one to two years. <coughs> You'd be talking about an estimate to get to the end of group stage two, just to start your outline business case, for something about five million. You then look to uh, developing a single option in group stage three, and that would be the order of 10 million. And that would be over a year to put that together. Then looking on to produce the production of an outline case, and that would be a minimum of a year. And on, on the scheme 500, it would be around 35 million. And then obviously, to, to build that aspect is the majority, as you'd expect, of a scheme of 450 million, which would be part of the 500 million scheme. So, in effect, what that, if, if you look at that, those timelines potentially, you're talking about eight years, perhaps a little bit longer. And I think what it's trying to explain is the steps that are taken through. That's why it takes so long. There's, there's often a little bit of frustration perhaps about the steps that are involved in you know, part of this is to, to sort of bring that out to the fore. You know. When you look at development support, in view of the uh, number of schemes that have been in the top 50, it would be reasonable to consider and identify development funding to take the preferred schemes forward. So in effect, when you look at various options, there's one up there for one of the stations, but there are many stations, because in our long-term strategy, we have in excess of 20 stations as aspirations. And another example that we've given there is the work that we're doing with uh, Lancashire County Council at the moment for a potential scheme to scale myself. At the moment, our particular intervention in time, our own, our own long-term strategy, is, is Hebble Lane. And what we've done is we're working with Lancashire, uh, to see if we can achieve that link in the fullness of time. But to achieve it, if that wasn't achievable because the overall cost was too significant, we've uh, safeguarded the fact that the Hebble Lane ambition is in our Merseyside long term rail asset, and therefore we've protected inside that scheme. So we'll do a grip three, and it includes Hebble Lane. If this whole scheme did go ahead, we could move on to group stage four with Hebble Lane. So when you look at the schemes that we've got, and I think of the larger schemes in terms of Central Station, Watling Tunnel, what it means is to complete what I would call the works in advance of an outline business case, you would need to be allocating something of the order of about five million a year to allow that early work to even consider an option to take forward to be that intervention. Worth recalling, perhaps what, what are the top schemes? There's a new station at Liverpool City Centre. There's the central station capacity. There's Lime Street. There's the reopening of Watling Tunnel. There's a potential railing for the airport. Yes, it's in the back end of the strategy, but it's in the strategy. <coughs> there are new stations. There's, there's, there's some new stations identified on the list. There's also the Skelmers there I've touched on. There's the Cheshire Line electrification, which again is inside. There are other parties involved. Of course, we're delivering. 
and that there is our new stations. We are doing work on the prioritization for those stations to see which interventions would offer what benefits to the city before we come forward. All of those need external funding being considered as part of those interventions once you've identified the priorities. So the challenges are is to bring those influences together. So those interdependencies, whether you're reliant on train operators, whether you're reliant on network rail through the new renewals program, whether there are key local priorities, and whether there are national plans, is to synchronize those together for your for the intervention being considered. And of course, it, it's managing that alongside other interventions for roadbed schemes or other skill schemes or regeneration schemes that the city region has to consider as part of that. Cross boundaries are always challenging schemes. It's challenging because there's more than one party. It may not be clear that the priorities are the same. And sometimes it will take a little bit of time, perhaps we might have lead on that within a, a, a corporate approach to a cross boundary scheme. And then, of course, they need to be aligned with Office of Rail and Road Regulator in terms of assurance of design, procurement, commercial aspects. And then, as we've touched on, there is the study work that's needed to get to an open business case. So part, part and the main reason really to run through this is really to highlight the challenges around the world. And perhaps some of the key things perhaps to, to take away, it is complex. The rail delivery schemes have a lot of processing parties involved. Two thirds of the top 15 schemes that have identified across the sub-region Quite a few of the projects are in the city centre, and it will be fair to say Central Station will be a challenge. It's our key transport <coughs> hub for the city region. HS2 won't be delivered till 2026, and of course, we've got our own uh, endeavours for a focus on what Liverpool is looking for, the city region for high speed. And even simpler schemes as Newton Willows, from design to completion, is four years, and then there's the pre planning and advanced starting. You know, you're talking about six years for that project. I think really, Joe, now it's, it was really to, to, to generate questions. Thanks, Shane. I'm sure there's a number of questions. Ken? Set out uh, in effect a flowchart 
making these steps in these years. And as you can imagine, you've just got to take one step at a time until you get more evidence going through. Uh, in respect of uh, uh, Prescott, uh, that's under consideration for um, a submission for uh, some SIF funding and uh, the deadline for those uh, submissions, which is a strategic of my case, is on the 9th of December and uh, change bill in order. intervention it is in the long term rail strategy, it's not in the early part, I only too can extract of some key issues to, to raise the profile about rail schemes within here, but I haven't covered all the rail schemes that there. Do you want to
through that presentation is realizing the steps that work behind each one. Yeah. 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 See a better service on Princeton and Wrexham. And in fairness, Ron, I'm actually quite optimistic uh, about it because I think, certainly in Kent Skates and the new Welsh administration, we've got a really good partner that wants to work with us and other cross boundary authorities. And I think when you look at how receptive Welsh government have been to the North Wales Rail Task Force and the whole uh, Track 360 proposition, the fact that as part of that, this organisation is leading the working group on Princeton and Wrexham. And the fact that uh, the Welsh Government is now going through the process of the next franchise for um, the Welsh franchise, I'm quite optimistic that early in the lifetime of the next Welsh franchise, we will see improvements on the bits of the next line. Is that, is that going to be a big bang electrification? Not in the first instances, but is it going to be a half hourly service? That's certainly our key target. I'm quite optimistic that we'll be able to hit that target in the next few years as the first stage improving the line and hopefully at some point actually having that full electrification and getting Mersey Rail services running on it as well. So I think we're in a much better place than perhaps we've been at previous times in the past, but there's still a lot more we've got to do in terms of putting our shoulder on the wheel to, to make it happen. John. Thanks, Chair. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks, Chair.
as McGull North. Uh, McGull North, equally, has the parties involved. It's not as advanced, obviously, as Newton Wills at this stage, but the combined authority made the decision on that on the 21st of October. Again, that was approval of the full business case. And we also submitted full plan permission into uh, the Second Council with determination expected in January of next year. So, all to, and that scheme completion again is April 18. So, they were three of the schemes in the first five years of our long term plan. Uh, from that point of view, at this time, they are, they are on those schedules. mentioned uh, a few things that I speak to, Northern Town House, change of rooms, things like this, can, can affect those. Um, the question I suppose is, has that and any of these things that have come about over the last you know, year or so, uh, changed the delivery time of these things, the cost of, of, of these, these subjects? And also, has it changed the priority in some of them uh, because of what decisions have In terms of the, um, if you like, the, the work that was identified for the first five years, to a large extent, we're, we're actually on schedule, but we have uh, more evidence base at the time that was put through as part of the long term. So actually, as you'd expect, the early years have more detail and perhaps a degree of uh, confidence, but we have to obviously work at it to arrive where we are. In terms of changing timelines, yes, there will be changing timelines because I, I, I may have touched across Scalmersdale, so Scalmersdale was an indicative. We've done some work in the last two years, and we've also took uh, some time, and, and I've touched on earlier, cross-boundary schemes are quite challenging for the right parties to lead, and we've spent quite a bit of time with, with actually developing a relationship so that that governance group is now in place, but also reflects that we've had a careful look at the steps involved in that with, uh, with, with Network Rail and with the Lancashire Council to, to see where is that timeline. So, on that one, when we come to review, that, that will go back because we now understand better what is involved in delivering the complete scheme if it was to come fruition for the full length through there. So part of the review that I mentioned, we're going to review long-term rail strategy before next April, is to review not only those changes, but actually the better evidence we've gathered over the last two years. And then there are schemes in there which are what I would call higher cost schemes, of which we're asking about some funds to allow us to develop enough information to make you know, an estimate realistic, to even to get into group stage three. So part of this presentation, one of the points I brought up is that we actually need a development fund of the order of five million a year. That's one of our asks, which will obviously give the, go into consideration for the combined authority, but that's one of our asks, because otherwise we'll always be that far behind even doing a group stage three for some of these interventions. And I suppose that's, that's why we're trying to highlight steps, process, and complexity involved. So yes, some of the timelines will change. That's why we're doing the review. Every few years, it's always planned we do a review of the long-term rail strategy within two or three years, and we're going to do that, and it will affect timelines. In terms of our own delivery, yes, I would have to say that when we started, perhaps uh, a year ago, uh, McGull North was perhaps uh, expected slightly early timeline. When we've worked through getting a detailed program, yes, costs have gone up, on to the combined authority because there was a cost gap and that was approved obviously as I've just touched on both the whole curve and the need for the goal north. The timelines have moved from when we first started two years ago. That's reflected, but what we've got in front of us is a robust one. This is not about me getting from me to speak to it, not about that at all. But that link was 
that business case, a direct link to the airport, form part of that consideration. So that those costs were at that time established as part of that business case, and uh, you can imagine it was considerably factors higher than the Liverpool South Parkway. That scheme went was approved on the basis that was it provided a multimodal interchange with.
answer to your question. There's nothing that we, we, we are responding to each of the issues that come up. So we've looked to strengthen the service. We've put that 500 service through in negotiations, obviously in that instance with uh, Arriva and with the airport making a contribution themselves. So each intervention, and there is an action plan, if you, if you want to see a copy of that, there is an action plan for the surface access strategy